Welcome to the MBR show where we scrutinize the latest bikes, critique the newest hardware and discuss the hottest topics in mountain biking. This month we're going to be revealing a few of the products that have really impressed us this year. We'll take a look at a couple of really interesting bikes that have surfaced in the last few weeks from Aper Bikes and Arc8. We'll go hands on with the exciting new white Elite with the Bosch SX motor. And Jamie and I have been hanging out with the Commonsal Muckoff team at Bike Park Wales, where we got to sit down, ask them a few questions and try and hang on to their coattails on a few of the trails. But to kick things off, let's talk about a few of the most impressive products that we've tested this year. We've got three products each. My first product is the Fox Union flat pedal shoe. I think it retailed originally 130 quid. It's a great shoe. The sizing's accurate. The grip's really good. And the sole seems to last really well. So it's not like you're compromising on, oh, it's a disposable shoe. They clean up really easily. They're quite waterproof. I mean, it's a great shoe. Yeah, I mean, we get so many shoes through the door here and 99% of the time we are disappointed they're in a box they're in a, <laughs> you're worn twice never to be worn again and the fact that we are all still using these shoes yeah. like eight months whatever down six yeah. months down the line uh, a testament to, to yeah, how Fox good nailed they are. it i mean your options were specialized 510 that was it now Fox. Bit of ride concepts yeah, maybe yeah a little bit but like that's that's an amazing product for currently like 70 pounds so if you need a new set of shoes that's definitely the one to get yep the other product for me was the Vitas Mythique LT VRX, the, this bike the behind, us. behind us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. because, um, so let's get one thing clear. That's the top end model, yeah? yeah? And when most brands launch their top end model, it's like 10, 12, 13, 14 grand. That bike's 4,399 pounds. Yeah, yeah, it's a different league, isn't it? <laughs> full size battery, full power motor, amazing suspension, great geometry, good handling. It's just, Vitas absolutely nailed it. Yeah, I mean, I love the fact that there's, that some you know brand is out there actually really focusing on kind of an, an affordable yeah. pr price point. I mean, still it's a, still a lot yeah, of money, absolutely. but absolutely, uh, you know, there's no massive compromises in performance yeah. on that bike. At and, all if we, and if we go back um, maybe five six years ago in e-biking, bikes like the Canyon, the Spectral on, and a few other bikes. In fact, there was a Vitas too, um, e-Summit. Yeah, um, those bikes were kind of in that price point, and we're like unbelievably good value for money so this is almost like the technology's moved on you've got like a slightly bigger battery you've got a bit more torque a bit more power but the prices sort of stayed the same which is yeah. unreal so the, the entry level model in the range is about 3k isn't yeah, it 3299 right. oh, that's so, really yeah. good so it's unreal and you get you also get the same 550 watt peak power eight, 95 newton meters of torque and those numbers are just numbers and when i actually did the test on that bike you just you find when it got really steep, it just kind of back off on the power a little bit. It was and it was wasn't quite as powerful as like an EP8 bike. Yeah. Um, but hey, it's it's four. It's, it's like it's under five grand. Yeah. It's un, yeah. it's unreal. Great. So, yeah. So my last product ties in with the shoes, really. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's the Berghaus Penthouse Mark IV composite pedals. Like they're forty quid and they're just bomb proof. Yeah. Like the grip's really good. The pins don't fall out. I've used them when we tested downhill bikes on the summer. I had them on the downhill bikes this summer and like they didn't bend. Like if you're going to hit a huge rock and smash a pedal, you're going to bend the axle. Yeah. So better to bend a 40 pound pedal than a yeah. 120 pound pedal. And Craig from Ride On had a really good little trick for them. So mine were quite old and they were kind of starting to feel a little bit kind of a little bit of play in them. He just used a positive drive screwdriver, made a hole in the in the resin body mm -hmm. and just filled them full of grease. Okay, so and you're in a grease just, port. Yeah, well, without the grease. port, yeah, and then they're amazing. <laughs> like, and now, like, that little bit of slop that was in them yeah. disappeared because the grease, they spin super free. Yeah. So, yeah, 40 pounds if you want a really good set of paddles that offer, like, good grip and they're durable, they're, they're amazing. They, they really blew me away. Cool. So. Well, I'd agree with all three of those yeah. uh, choices. Oh, that's good. Isn't it? Yeah, 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 we're off to a good start. <laughs> yeah. See so, if you agree with any of them. So, what were your three top products okay. for? Well, I'm going to start with the One Up Carbon E Bar, and not specifically because it's an E Bar. I didn't use the E Bar features, which is basically a hole and a, and a running, slot yeah. for running your remote wiring through, but only really compatible with the Shimano bikes, I think, okay. that, that feature. The interesting thing with this bar is the flex. Mm -hmm. So it's got an ovalized midsection. Yeah. So they're just 
promotes kind of up and down movement rather than kind of twisting torsional movement when you're steering. And they've got some pretty bold claims for it. So they say that it has an average of 21% more vertical compliance than equivalent competitors bars. Uh, and a 28% increase in steering stiffness compared to, uh, on average, compared to competitors. Okay. Uh, we can't really back up those claims in terms of uh, lab tests or anything, but when I took the bar out on the trail and back-to-backed it against a tri- well, it was actually a trivative carbon bar, mm-hmm. same rise, same clamp, size, clamp yeah. diameter, all of that, same width, the difference in the ride experience was really quite dramatic. So when you're going into something where there's you know quite a lot of square edge stuff and it's your bike's getting deflected everywhere, mm-hmm. I actually found a kind of path of least resistance. Um, okay. So you're fighting the bike a lot less. It kind of calmed down the trail. Okay. Um, and on the whereas on the Trevative, I'm just really wrestling with the bike, getting pinged around. The the one up is is, is is really calm. It's a really interesting idea because. Like that thing with the stiffness in terms of steering stiffness versus flex, there's an assumption that you steer like this, not like this. You know what I mean? It's like if you yeah. if you lean on a bar to steer, yeah. then do you want that yeah, yeah. much movement? I don't know. Or maybe when you're leaning on the bar like that and you're loading it and then the bike's deflecting, that's where the movement becomes beneficial. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's really interesting. I mean, I, I did find that in terms of steering precision, I didn't think the one up had more precision yeah, than, yeah. Than, the, than the Trevative bar. And I'm just picking on the Trevative bar because that's the one I, I tried. So I'm not sure about the claims of extra steering stiffness, mm-hmm. but definitely in terms of compliance, it was a lot more compliant, a lot more comfortable. So, I mean, I really liked it. So yeah, that's the one up bar. Second product is the specialized Gambit full face helmet. When we went to Morzine to ride yeah. the, the downhill bikes, which we, we'll have a test yeah. coming up soon, um, I was like, okay, what helmet are I gonna take with me? And I could see the weather forecast was really, really hot. It was 30 plus every day. Yeah, so I was like, turn. okay, I'm gonna take something that's got a bit more ventilation, it's a bit lighter weight. And I hadn't tried this before, but I saw it in the workshop, I was like, okay, I'll give this a go. So we're looking at, it's two, 225 quid, but they're on sale at the moment for I think 125, which wow. is crazy. Weighs 631 grams, which is a couple of hundred grams more than like a Troy Lee A3 open mm. face, which is barely anything. It's 100 grams lighter than the Troy Lee Stage full face, mm. kind of enduro, lightweight enduro helmet. I think it's 200 grams lighter than the Fox Pro frame. So it's, it's yeah, super, super light, light. Yeah. fully DH certified, which is pretty amazing. It's got this really cool uh, integrated retention yeah. dial in uh, inside the, the helmet there. 360 degree retention device. So you can basically release the tension to take it on and off super easily. It's got a really easy to use buckle as well. So when you get to the bottom of a trail and you're waiting for the uplift cue, you just take it on and off super easily. You're not worrying about like a D loop, double D loop thing. It's not got the, the like cheap pads that are like turning into a gerbil and stuff. And it just has loads of airflow. So you, you don't feel like claustrophobic and. Yeah, it's pretty cool though, isn't it? For like an enduro like style helmet, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, really good product. Yeah. So I was, I was impressed with that. And so yeah, we, we've both chosen a bike. I chose the Canyon Neuron 6, which is a kind of uh, entry level trail bike mm-hmm. in the Canyon range. 130 mil travel. It got totally revamped, right? Totally revamped. I went on the launch for it about this time last year. Now, the reason I chose it is is it's just a really good mountain bike. It seems like more and more bikes are getting pigeonholed into smaller and smaller niches. And, and this is just a bike that works in like a load of different situations. So what sort of travels it got? So 130 rear, 140 fork. Mm-hmm. There's an alloy frame version. There's a carbon frame version. I rode both. I actually really preferred the alloy. So we had the car, we had the alloy bike. We, we had the we alloy bike. together. That's yeah, right, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. Really, really fun, really, really lively, really dynamic, nice flex, nice feel to it. Yeah, they've just done a really good job. Like the, actually the old bike, I hated. Okay. You know, I mean, maybe hate's a strong word, but I really disliked it. Mm-hmm. It was just conservative in the sizing and the geometry. Yeah. So it was quite a kind of struggle to ride. For a beginner's bike, it actually took a bit of skill to ride. Whereas the new bike- Oh, it's super easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, yeah, super easy to it's ride fast. totally intuitive to ride, like really stable. So it gives you loads of confidence. You can ride it aggressively as well oh, yeah. if you're a confident rider. Yeah, it's no, a I, really cool bike. 
Yeah, because yeah. yeah, because you had it, and then I took a spin on it, and I was like, oh, this thing's amazing. It's amazingly good fun. It's yeah. fast. It's easy to ride. Anyone that gets on that bike is just gonna fall in love with mountain biking. Yeah, it's great. Uh, so yeah, that was my my choice of bike for cool. for twenty twenty three. So so that wraps up our three favorite products each for twenty twenty three. Yeah. So yeah, if we've used our in house affiliate tool to search for the best deals on the products that we've featured here, and we've dropped a link in the description to each of them. So if you're interested in getting your hands on them uh, yourselves, then it's all down below. Now, Al, uh, you've been looking into a couple of interesting new suspension designs yeah. that have uh, come out recently. Are you going to tell, tell us a bit about those? Well, yeah, there's two bikes. There's a bike from Greece, and we, I think it's I think the brand is Aper. It could be Aper. I'm not sure which way they're pronouncing it. They've got a bike called the Compace, which is basically a 160 mil travel enduro bike. Um, it's got a CNC machine frame. So, like, kind of like again, they're, it's a bit like Pole and some kind of rapid prototype. Like an old pace. Well, yeah, too. Yeah, like in a whole face, but like using a kind of rapid prototype technique to, to build like maybe small numbers of bikes. Yeah. But what's interesting about their bike is they've got a, the shocks mounted on a rail. The shock and the pivot, are, main pivot, are mounted on okay. a rail. So it's got 160 mil travel, but it's got 45 mil of rearward axle path. And their thinking on it is that they wanted the rear axle to follow more closely the front axle. So their calculations, they reckon on like a typical enduro bike, it's about 70 mil rearward on your fork okay because you've got like a 63 degree head angle and you've got 170 mil of travel yep. the wheel comes up and back so they want it to not be identical but to kind of be more like parallel yep. and i think what's interesting with the rail is that the rail allows them to have this kind of like it's not just sort of like rearward and then vertical it's kind of rearward it's a more consistent rearward okay. axle path because the pivot goes up and back as it goes through the travel that's a really neat feature off that bike. It's an idler design, obviously, because they want to, they've got a really rearward axle pass, so you can't just have a normal, if you had normal chain ring, you'd have crazy pedal kickback. Yeah, so yeah. they've got their idler, and, and it's a twin link bike, so they've got a rail and a link. And so the bottom rail acts like a super long pivot. Yeah. So if you think about like a, and this is what links us in nicely to the arcade bikes. So one of the first bikes I saw this on was it, it was a cross country bike, the Evolve FS. And um, instead of having like a really mini link that just kind of like has a massive amount of variation, they've got a rail underneath the top tube. And when I spoke to the engineer there, he goes, yeah, well, what's really cool about it, it's like an infinitely long link. Because if you think of a really small link has quite a tight radius and a big arc with a lot of variation, and then you make the link longer and it gets smoother. If you make the link infinitely long, it's flat. Yeah. And that's a rail. So basically, you're you're keeping the leverage right. You can really, have, you can, really you can make it really consistent, and you can change it and stuff. And also, it's it's really light because mm -hmm. it's just a rail. It's like it's kind of they're they're eliminating the link. So like RK, the Evolve FS was basically like a progressive XC bike, yeah. um, super light. So I mean, a sub ten kilogram yeah. bike. And like I remember, I rode it in Italy, and I was like, this bike's pretty impressive for like. It had a really progressive geometry. It was only available on two sides. It had a funky, super short, one-piece bar stem. And it was a really cool bike. But they've actually got a prototype DH bike now. So they've gone from like one extreme to the other. Oh, using the rail system. Yeah, using right. the rail system. And, um, and, it's, and like, so that's really cool that they're using the rail system on their DH bike. And it's kind of reminiscent a bit of like the Yeti, like is it 303s and those, mm. remember Yeti yeah, did that yeah. whole range of prototypes using yeah, rails. Like forklift truck. Yeah, sort slightly of thing, yeah. different style rails, but like the same idea. But what's actually really cool about their downhill bike is that they use these kind of like two like I think they're water cut or laser cut plates that go on the side of the frame. Basically, it's your front shock mount, mm -hmm. your bottom bracket, and then where the swing arm connects, the, the where the swing arm connects to the rail. So they can change the geo, the progression rate, the BB height, the chainstay length, because they just basically bolt these pieces off, cut new ones, and put them back on. It's such a cool like prototyping technique because. It just gives them complete control over all the variables. It's like, it's kind of amazing. Cause I was like, you know, like, oh, it's another rail bike. And I was like, yeah, that's cool. But hey, look at what, <laughs> look what you can do with the Geo. And like, it's, it's excellent. It's wow. like, so I don't, I don't think that would be how you'd make the bike yeah. for production, but it's a really cool way to try all the different variables to get it exactly how you want it. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if that, I don't know when that bike's going to make it into production, but it's definitely one to watch. That sounds cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Now let's uh, move on to perhaps the most uh, significant bike that White has launched for mm -hmm. quite a while now, isn't it? The E-Lite. Yeah, it's pretty cutting edge. Yeah. It's not just cutting edge, it cuts the e-bike category into another segment. <laughs> it's like, so they're calling it mid-torque high power 
god. Yeah, totally. So, <laughs> so basically, we've got what we kind of have your analog bikes, you've got lightweight mid power bikes, and you've got full power bikes. And this bike's got a kind of sits in between a, a lightweight mid power and a and a full power. It's kind of confusing. It's not it's not as confusing no. as it sounds. I mean, it's it's the because of the Bosch motor, exactly. isn't it? Yeah, it's built around the Bosch SX motor, which has got 55 newton meters torque and a peak power of 600 watts. Yeah, which is a lot on paper, isn't it? Doesn't feel like it when you ride it. Yeah. yeah. So basically, it's cadence dependent. So how fast your like RPM, how fast your pedals are spinning. So you need to get up to like 110 RPM to get that 600 watts peak power. So that's it's that's how that's how the power goes up, and that's really bloody fast on a mountain bike. That is that's a high cadence, isn't especially it? Especially if you're on flat pedals. Yeah. Uh, yeah almost yeah. impossible to get. But it's there if you can if you can get there. It'll give it to you. But you just can't ride this bike and expect it to, oh, look, oh, 600, that's the same as the blah, blah, blah. It's like when you go ride it, it won't feel like that. Yeah. It'll feel much closer to the, to the mid-power bikes, yeah. the mid-power lightweight bikes. Yeah, I mean, effectively, it is, that's what it is, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. And like, what's also really cool about it, so it comes with a 400 watt-hour battery, and then it's got this, the Power More 250 watt hour range extender. That's a big range extender. It is a big range extender, but it's actually not, it's big in terms of capacity. It's not that big in terms of size though. And what's really cool is that they haven't just used a standard water bottle cage and put this in and put a rubber band around it and hope it doesn't fly out. It slides in and it locks in place. It's really secure. Yeah. That's it's a really, it's a really cool feature, isn't it? When you add the two together, that's equivalent to a lot of full power e-bikes in terms of yeah. battery capacity. It's a, lot, it's a lot of capacity, and it's almost equivalent to some really lightweight full power e-bikes in terms of weight. So the bike weighs 19.72 kilos to the top end works bike. So you add this on, which is another one and a half kilos. Yep. You're getting close to some of the lightweight yeah, yeah. full powered bikes. So the decision then is, how do you want to slice it? Yeah. And in terms of travel, so they call it the E-Lite 150. And like most white bikes, it's the name comes from the fork travel. So mm -hmm. it's got a 150 mil fork. It doesn't have 150 on the rear. It's got 142 mil travel. Yep. And what's really neat is they've because it's a UK brand, it's kind of got a custom spec. It's got Hope hubs, it's got Hope cranks, yeah. it's got Tech 4 V4 brakes. The kind of things you wouldn't find on any of the main so it's a little bit brand. more boutique a little bit more interesting than it some is of the it is it's, it's really it's really cool and like what's what's really cool about it too is that the ride quality is super good they've really got the suspension super well tuned it's got a really nice kind of planted plush sort of feel to it and and what i've noticed really like and i've kind of harped on about this before is everybody goes on about oh yeah the weights it's about the weight it's just the bike has a feel to it it's just a bit like you talked about with the handlebars you're kind of like the big full power bikes can feel quite jarring and quite stiff and this bike just kind of feels like it's got that bend and a flex and the way it absorbs stuff feels much more similar to an analog yep. bike so i think these bikes are for riders that are looking for some assistance, more assistance, or maybe have had maybe have had a full power bike and don't don't like that kind of the way you have to muscle ride yep. them, and they want a bike that rides more natural. Yeah, um, this is a great option. Yeah, the bike costs nine 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 nine. It's basically ten. It's a ten grand bike. It's a spendy bike. Mm -hmm. It's a full carbon frame. It's got carbon wheels. It's got you know it's factory got, stuff, it's tram, factory tram, stuff, tram yeah. T type yeah. transmission yeah. axis. It's got it's got everything on it. But they also do a model which is called the RSX for 7999. Okay. So like you can kind of, it's got the same frame, different yeah. build kit. Um, that's like the the affordable version. Yeah, great. Well, um, if you want to find out more about this bike, there's uh, you've got your, your yeah, full first ride, first ride yeah, yeah, on the totally. website, nbr.co.uk. So Danny, you and Jamie got to ride with the muck off, the common style muck off team. Um, how was that by Park Wells? Yeah, we got to ride with them all, hung with them. In the uplift, <laughs> <You> didn't, really <laughs> see, didn't really see him past the first corner on yeah. the on the trails, but that's understandable. Though, isn't it? I mean, they're, like they're high level. Yeah, you know, they're not bad. They know what they're doing. Yeah, it was really cool. Like there was uh, a lot of people just hanging out, taking selfies with oh, them, amazing. sitting and asking them questions and stuff. So it was it was really interactive, and I think that is an amazing thing about mountain biking that the stars, you know, the best in the world. You turn up to a bike park and there, and there they are, you know. Yeah, yeah, and, totally. You know, imagine like going go karting or something, and then Lewis Hamilton sort of in the cart yeah. next to you or something. Yeah, it yeah. just wouldn't happen. So that was really cool. So we sat down with Amory, Thibault, and Miriam, asked them a few questions, and this is how we got on. Yeah, I think it's uh, when I won my first World Cup in Leger two years ago. Uh, I crashed uh, the week before and was a pretty bad crash, and then I was able to win the race the week after. So it was a pretty good moment, and 
unforgettable and special because it's home and yeah also a big crowd and, and yeah, yeah all the all the conditions were a bit crazy so <laughs> it was pretty good to, to be able to win this race the one when i won for asia it was really a track that didn't suit me and i really went there into like okay i want to to do good in this track because the champion has to be good everywhere yeah. and i won so i was a uh, really happy to win the opening of the season and that stays like a really good remember and uh, for me Legia as well uh, 2022 uh, for the world championship like uh, having the world championship in france was insane and uh, even if I was, I was looking for a better spot uh, i ended up on the podium and uh, just want to see franchise on the podium where uh, was, mental it was unbelievable I was, yeah I was really there. like people yeah. everywhere like on the on the car, on the house, like crazy. Maybe the one I never rode is uh, Windham. Was oh, yeah. In USA, it was yeah. like kind of short and maybe, I don't know, so it's good. And maybe, yeah, a few years before me, like two or three years, maybe before I went into junior category. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know, interesting yeah. years. Yeah, cool. But now the sport is so high, so maybe this year the best too. And and what racer? Who would you like to have been with? You know, like maybe the Sam Hill era or the Nico era or the uh, or Palmer or you know, is there someone? Yeah, maybe the Nico area would be funny to to race again, even if the bike were not really the same as now. But uh, it was so like uh, stronger and uh, faster than the others, but it could be <laughs> interesting yeah. to see how it was uh, to be riding with so him. Far ahead, wasn't it? Yeah, the, uh, exactly. So I was there racing, but I wish at this time I could have been Danny, Danny Hart during 2011. His winning run was just insane. And just hearing the commentary of Rob Warner is the... Yeah. Uh, uh, I wish I could have lived this run. <laughs> it must have been insane. And me, I think, yeah, the era of uh, of Samil and race. Schladming never been there. Like I've been there, but not for for racing. And back in the day, it looks really really tricky with root uh, woods everywhere. It was wet, so yeah, it looks a really good track to to race. One thing I wanted to say which is a slightly different, different subject, but similar, is that um, Rowan and I went and rode the, le the latest version of Willy Waver at Bike okay. Wales at the end of the day. And um, considering like Rowan was on a downhill bike, <laughs> Willy Waver's a blue trail. And uh, oh my God, it was amazing. So the trail crew there have done an incredible job like buffing that trail to perfection resurfacing re okay, they've wow. got this this amazing surface that they use uh, and it just like kind of whack a plates into this perfect ribbon uh, down the hill oh yeah <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yeah, they definitely worked out how to link turns there now. Yeah, they? yeah, which which it, which wasn't always the case in the past. But I rode some trails there last time we were down for the for the bike park Wells ten tenth yep. birthday. Yeah, and some of the turns are just like one bang bang to another, oh. and you just like you go light in the middle and it's You're pocket bouncing, into the next one, bouncing yeah. from one to another. Yeah, it's really cool. So uh, anyone who's going to Bike Park Wales, I recommend you go and ride Willy Waver before... Get hammered. <laughs> get hammered. Yeah. Well, maybe you're too late. But, but yeah, uh, big thumbs up to We to need to get a show that earlier, don't we? If we want to give people advice on that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So thanks very much for watching the show. And if there are any products that have really impressed you this year, just let us know.